Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Blanche SB, and I've got another Serpents 3 introductory video for you. In this video, we're going to cover making a couple of panels and copying a couple of Blender operators. And we're also going to cover adjusting a few properties. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, just to speed things up, I've added three panel nodes, and it's easy to add a panel. You just go to the Add menu or Shift A. Go to your interface and look for the panel. It's right here. Now for my first panel, I've given it the name panel one. My next panel I've given the name panel two. Next panel is panel three. These are these are names that you can use inside your node graph as you reference your panels. Now the label is going to be what shows up on the panel at the header. And the category for each of these panel is set to ops. So they can stack if you're using the same name. Now you can set the order for your panels. So if I move the order, you can notice that my move will go up or down. I've got them ordered the way I want, and I'm going to be doing a duplicate operation. I'm going to move the duplicate object, and then we're going to scale it. We'll have three different buttons to do that. Or actually, you know what, we'll do some properties for these two. But we'll do a copy and operator for this one. So let's go ahead and go to our object menu. I've got this object selected, and under Object, there is a Duplicate Operator. And you can either click the operator and make the operation happen, or sometimes you can right-click and get the Serpent's Operator. So we're going to try that today. When you do that, I can actually have my console open here, and I can paste that in. You'll notice that it pastes the entire operator, and I could actually call that and run it in the console as long as the context is correct. Some operators require a different context. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste this in here. All I have to do is bring in a button. Let's go to Add Menu, and on our interface, we're looking for a button. By default, buttons are set for Blender operator buttons, and all you have to do is paste. Now, I don't need to worry about these eye icons for this operator. I can just plug this in. You'll notice that my duplicate panel has a button now. I'm just going to rename it to duplicate, and I can go ahead and give it an icon, and let's give it a Suzanne. Now when I call that, you'll notice that it will duplicate and move. I don't necessarily want the duplicate and move, so if I come over here to the object and I look at the duplicate objects, You'll notice that it says bpyops.object.duplicate underscore move. And if you don't see that when you highlight your mouse, all you have to do is come up to the eye icon and turn on your Python tooltips. So I want to get the one that doesn't do moving, and I've already done research on this operator. So I'm just going to do the same basic text, bpyops object, and I'm going to type in du and hit tab. And I've got the option to do duplicate with a parentheses. When I do that, it's just going to duplicate the selected object. So I can copy that text now. And now I've got just a duplicate operator. Let's delete the Suzanne, bring the Suzanne in, and duplicate. And notice how I don't have to worry about the move modal. I can move it on my own afterwards. That's good. That's what I want. Now, let's say I want to perform move operations after the fact, and I want to perform my own scaling operations after the fact. I can do that. With my object here, I can come over to the object properties, and I can right-click and get the Serpent's property. And in order to display a property, you need a display property node. So I'm going to click on the Add, go to Interface, and we're looking for Display Property. Now these are all alphabetical. You're going to find it a little bit towards the top. We're going to put it on this panel. Now when I connect it, you'll notice it says no property connected. I need to feed it some kind of blend data in order to make the property show up. And I'm looking for this property here. It's a vector 3 for moving. And because I copied it, I can do Shift and V, and it will paste in that copied property. Now, you can also go to the Add menu, and under Properties, 
we have a blender property node and it's the same thing you can click on paste and it would paste the same item all I have to do is plug in that location and look at that now if I want that to be set in the vertical sense like I have here all I have to do is add in a column node I did a row, I'm sorry. Column is on the interface, but I can use a search menu. If I do Shift A and hit S, I can just start searching for the things I want. There we go. Now uh, my property being displayed as columns. Okay. So I'm gonna set my scale to be order number two. And we're gonna do the same thing. Right click, get the property actually duplicate these down and all we have to do is paste in new property for scale now you'll notice I'm doing it on this object if I click on this object and I set the moving around you'll notice that the duplicated object is the one that gets moved and that's because Move these over a little bit and expand these out. Referencing Suzanne.001. She's the one that got copied because I had her selected when I right clicked and got the serpent's property. Now if I want to grab the active object, I have to come over and change how I'm grabbing the object data. You can do this a couple ways, but you can always turn it to property. And in Serpents, they have a couple of defaults already. And if you don't need to provide anything, you'll see these parentheses here. And it'll default to using the active object. I'm going to change both of these to using active. And now when I adjust, you'll notice that the move values are unique. It'll be based upon whoever is active. Now if I delete this object, notice how everything is gone. And have we caused an error in our console? Yep, we have. Because there is no object, and I'm trying to reference the active object here. So in order to get around that, all we have to do is look to see if we have an active object in the first place. I'm going to do that on the left. I'm just going to add an if else node. Go to my interface, and I'm looking for if else. Put that in front. I'm going to duplicate it, put it in front there. Bring these over. And I need to check to see if my object is active. And on the add menu, if we go into blend data, you'll have an objects node. And on the objects node, we can grab active object. And you can plug this right into a Boolean. And basically that's gonna say, is there an active object? And if not, don't worry about displaying anything. Now I'm gonna clear my console. You'll notice when I hover my mouse over here, my context is scanning to see if I can provide data and I'm not getting errors anymore. Now when I click away from this object, it's still technically active as you can see in my outliner. But if I were to duplicate, move, and then delete, you'll notice that I'm not gonna get any errors in my console. Pretty cool, huh? Let's say I don't want to make the object move in edit mode or scale in edit mode because in edit mode we're affecting the vertices, not the object itself. So I don't want to show this panel or any of these panels for that matter. So I'm going to go ahead and do an in mode node and you can search for that in and then pick in mode and you're just going to change that over to object. And I want to invert the Boolean because when I'm in object mode, I want it to not hide. You can see if I hide these, they're going to disappear. So inverting the Boolean when I'm in object mode, I want this to be a zero. If I'm in any other mode, now when I change my mode to edit mode, you'll notice that everything is gone and it clears up my end panel. 
And what if I wanted all these to be um, built into my duplicate panel and I want to make these two sub panels? I have an option to make a sub panel by clicking on this checkbox here. Now you notice it doesn't make it a sub panel yet because it's tied to a different panel. All you have to do is check off of the blender and go to custom. And this is the node tree. I only have one node tree currently, and that's my new add-on node tree. And I want to tie them to panel one. Do the same with this one. Tie it to panel one. And now I can hide all my panels by just hiding the main panel one. The sub panels you can hide individually as well. So in this video, we've covered panels, adding a button from a blender operator covered adding in display properties and copying blender properties, how to set it for an active object, or you can also type in a specific object name by changing this over to name. You can also choose an object by index. So which, which object number in my scene am I gonna reference? Covered columns, how to sort our data. And we have an if else to display something downstream. Now, when it's false, nothing is displayed because I have nothing connected. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you on the next one.